And now moving over to our daily coverage of the Sochi 2014 Winter Olympics, we are of course joined live in the studio by our Iteho. Good afternoon, Tito. Good afternoon. Now, I think uh, one of the current trends in Sochi this time around for the Winter Olympics this time is that uh, we really cannot expect the outcome of any event. That's right. Now, with the Olympics being such a hyped event, so many people watching around the world, I think a lot of expectations on the athletes are enormous, and sometimes it's very difficult to live up to those expectations. Right, and uh, we've definitely seen some of you know the favorites of different events uh, failing to uh, make up to their best records or winning the race. Well, not even just winning the race or living up to their expectations, their normal expectations. I think uh, most notably, Sean White failing to medal at all. In in the men's snowboarding event, or even our uh, Motebam, who was the gold medalist at the 2010 Games in the 500 meter event, uh, placing fourth. And uh, that was a disappointing result, but it's always ever so changing with these uh, new athletes coming up and uh, new training techniques that you never know what to expect really in the Olympics. Right, and even uh, with Motebum going into uh, the 1,000 meter men's speed skating event, I mean, we had expected, uh, I suppose, a battle between Motebum and, and perhaps Shannon Davis of the U.S., but that was not the case. That was not the case at all. Now, Shani Davis, who was the two-time Olympic gold medalist in the 1,000 meter event, event for the 2006 and 2010 Olympics failed to medal at all, placing a very disappointing eighth place. Now, he was the overwhelming favorite. Uh, he was trying to make history, uh, being the only man to win the same event three times in a row for America. Um, and also, Motebom too. He, uh, he was expected to do much better than how he performed last night. He was a silver medalist at the, uh, the 2010 Games, but he came in uh, a disappointing 12th place. And also, of course, uh, making news for Korea was Lee gyu who uh, had his last race, really, at the Olympics. And uh, it was just kind of really hard to see. Uh, one of the legendary great skaters of Korea, calling it, uh, you know, the last run and seeing how exhausted he was after the whole event itself. Right. I mean, um, you know, he's a, I think Lee gyu could be, uh, you know, named a, a true Olympian, if you will. I mean, six-time Olympian. I mean, he's been to the Olympics six times. And, you know, it, the race last night, Although it wasn't a winning race, it was a truly inspirational race for, I, I suppose, many of us around the world. And I think with the Korean skaters, what I noticed was that, you know, for the first, their start and the first uh, 600, 500 to 600 meters, they ran a very good race with good times, but it was down the stretch, the last 400 meters that they really had a lot of difficulty with. But regardless of the result, all of our athletes, I think, did very well. Uh, they really tried their hardest this time around. Now, um, also in competition last night with, was uh, Korea's new, uh, one of new favorite sports, curling. That's right. Now, uh, the Korean curling team is far from the favorites at this uh, 2014 Sochi, but I think they were very disappointed in themselves for their performance, especially with the skipper, Kim ji uh failing to make, uh, I guess, cold-hearted calls at the right time. Uh, so them losing to uh, the number four uh, team in the world, Switzerland, 6-8, to eight, and then again losing to the number one team uh, in the world, Sweden, 4-7. Uh, to seven. Now, regarding the rankings around the world, Korea is the lowest ranking team uh, in the Olympics for curling, but regardless, I think failing to live up to their own personal expectations was the hardest for the team members. Right. I mean, I, they have such a bright future ahead of them. Uh, curling is just becoming one of the stronger sports for Korea, winter sports. And, you know, they should not feel bad about this at all. Now, uh, let's move on to women's figure skating. I mean, it's a week away. The short event is a week away. And uh, still uh, already there is much hype and much media coverage going on between who will win uh, between Queen Yana and a young upstart from Russia. That's right. Now, the women's figure skating event is one of the biggest events in all of the winter sports activities uh, for the Olympics especially. And with the arrival of Queen Yuna Kim, of course, uh, we see a lot of media focus turning to the practice schedules, who will be practicing when. And it, it turns out that uh, both Kim Yuna and uh, Lipniskaya will be practicing at the same time at one of the practice sessions. So 
Uh, it's, it's a great storyline, uh, as if there wasn't already enough attention on the, the women's skating event, because this is, of course, Kim Yuna's final Olympics. She said that she will retire after this from the Olympics. So it's an interesting storyline. We'll see. Uh, we'll have to see how Russia's new sweetheart, Linda Sky, will do against, uh, of course, one of the greats in figure skating. Right, and I'm sure you will keep us updated with all of the latest on that as well. Uh, now, yesterday, it wasn't all bad news for Team Korea. No, not at all. Uh, if for many of us, we missed out on the, uh, we were waiting for the medal ceremony for Yi Sang Hwa, and we only got a flower ceremony after the actual event. However, the official medal ceremony took place last night. Uh, she was teary eyed. She was very, very, I guess, overjoyed. She's been in that position before, but regardless, the, another four years of that training and all the grueling, uh, very difficult uh, uh, lifestyle that she's had to lead, uh, I think kind of overwhelmed her in that moment. You know, one of the things that, um, that I was curious about is uh, was why she wasn't awarded with a medal uh, right after her, her competition, why there was just a flower ceremony and then the, the day after they are awarded with a medal. Well, I think that's one of the biggest differences between the summer and winter games. During the summer events, after the competition is over, uh, athletes are awarded the medal right away. However, at the winter games, uh, athletes are given a day to rest so they can recuperate from uh, the cold and the exhaustion and really be able to take in the moment the next day at a central location where also more fans can gather to congratulate them. Right, and really enjoy their victory and um, I suppose, you know, make it up to uh, their, their fans in the crowd. All right, Teo, thank you so much for today. I'm sure we'll have much more to talk about tomorrow. That's right.